Now I know you've been trying to shallow out that club. Everyone's trying to do it. All the pros are doing it. If you want to stop coming over the top and steep and want to start shallowing out that club and getting that club in the slot, I have a great drill for you. So the biggest issue that I see that people have with this is they really want that trail arm, that elbow to work out away from the body. You can see how that really steepens the shaft. Now that feels really powerful, but the problem is when you do that, you steepen the shaft and now you have to stand up and flip the club through impact. That's gonna rob you of all your power. It's gonna make you inconsistent. So what we wanna do is get that club shallowing out. So that way we can have that club in the slot and we can really turn through that ball, get the hands in front at impact and be able to get that really good speed and compression. So for this drill, what I want you to do is initially without a ball, I just want you to go up to the top and pause at the top. Now let's drop the arm, the trail arm off the club. You can see when I do that, the club naturally just wants to drop and shallow. So what's happening there is my lead arm here, my upper arm, my humerus in my shoulder here is internally rotating. So that's turning my elbow out toward the ball. And then with my wrists here, it's internally rotating as well. It's, it's pronating and that's also getting the club to shallow out. So if you imagine, it's almost like turning a doorknob, right? That's, that's what's happening with the club. So we're here and now that turn knob is, that doorknob is turning and that's getting that club to shallow out. So let's do one, let's go up to the top. Let's turn, turn the doorknob, let that club, let that arm drop off there. Then we're gonna turn through. Now what's really, really important is that we turn through the ball. We can't come, when we're coming down steep, we're generally not gonna turn through the ball because if we did, right, if we're coming down steep and I turn through the ball, I'm gonna come so over the top, it's not even funny. So I have to, when I come down steep, I have to kind of stand up and flip to get that club to work closer down on plane to be able to hit a functional golf shot. So when you get the club shallowing out, you have to turn through the ball. Otherwise, if I don't, if I still, if I did that early extension, I move my hips toward the ball and I had the club shallow, well, my club's gonna work too much from the inside. I'm more than likely gonna hit the ground before the ball. If, even if I get to the ball, I'm gonna hit a big block or a hook, maybe an S word, you know, something like that the results aren't gonna be good. So I have to, when I shallow out the club, I also have to really make sure I turn through the ball. So we're gonna do that with our legs, right? So I really need you to kind of squat down into the ground. And a really good visual that I like to have for this is to imagine you're standing on top of a pickle jar and you're trying to twist that pickle jar, right? So I need to feel like I'm pushing out that way with my lead leg to push my hip back. And I need to feel like with my trail leg, I'm pushing back behind me to twist off that pickle jar. Now, I want to feel like I'm getting more to my lead side, like more of that pressure is in my lead side. But that's the feeling that I want to have is that I'm twisting off the pickle jar. So again, I'm going to go up to the top. I'm going to pause. I'm going to drop the right arm off of there. And then I'm going to twist the pickle jar and turn through where the ball would be. So I want you to get some good reps in with that, where you're pausing at the top, letting the club, letting the right arm drop letting the club drop, and then turning through the ball. Now what we want to do is we want to do that in more of a fluid motion in the downswing. So we're still going to pause at the top, but I want you, as you're letting that arm drop off there, I want you to start turning through the ball. So that would look something like this, go to the top. I'm letting that drop, and now I'm turning through the ball. So get in another 10 reps where you're doing that fluid kind of motion there, where you're, you're not doing the pause as you're coming down. You're only pausing at the top letting it drop and turning through at the same time. So once we start getting more comfortable with that, now we wanna start adding the trail arm in there because we can't hit balls with our, with our lead arm only. I mean, we could, but it would be pretty, it'd be pretty, be pretty hard. So we want that trail arm in there for support to, so that way we can have consistent contact. So when we put the trail arm on there, we really wanna feel like that club is still dropping back behind us. So what's going on with our trail arm? Well, it's just the opposite of the lead arm. The, 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 the elbow is gonna be working toward the ball, but it's actually going to be externally rotating in my, in my shoulder here. So my humerus and my shoulder here, that's external rotation. And then with my trail hand, my, my, my wrist is turning like that. So my palm is kind of pointing up to the sky, and that's what's referred to as supination or supination. Depending on how you say it, I've heard it said, <laughs> said both ways. But that's what I need to have happen to get that club to drop more behind me so I can turn through the ball. So again, I'm gonna go up to the top, I'm gonna to pause, I'm gonna do those, those motions, I'm gonna let that club drop behind me, and then I'm gonna turn through the ball. 
Once I get comfortable with that, now I'm gonna try and do that in more of a fluid motion, just like I did previously. So I'm gonna go up to the top, pause, I'm gonna let the club drop as I turn through the ball. Get 10 more of those in, and then once you feel comfortable with that, then let's try to add, add the ball, and let's do it with the golf ball there. So when you add the ball, I want you to do the pause at the top initially, and I want you to go nice and slow with it. If you're hitting off of a mat, that's perfect. If you're hitting off of actual turf, what I'd recommend doing is teeing up the ball. It'll make it a little bit easier at first. So let's try to do one here. Let's try to go where we go up to the top. We pause at the top, let the club drop behind us as we're turning through. Let's see if we can get um, a decent shot here. And again, we're going nice and slow with this. I'm not trying to go for speed here. I'm just trying to get the motion down. So up the top, pause. All right, so hit that one there pretty solid. That's exactly what I wanted. I wanted the path to be just pretty close to zero. I wanted to get that club shallowing out, getting my body to rotate through there. But you notice here how I got the face open, right? That ball actually was more of a push slice. And this is gonna be very, very common when you're working on this because when you shallow out the club, that actually opens the face. So we have to do other things as we're coming into contact to be able to square that face. You see, when you're coming down steep, you're going to stand up and flip, and that's going to square the face. But if I have these same wrist angles at impact where my lead wrist is cupped, my trail wrist is flat, and I get the hands more in front, which I should be able to do if I get the club shallowing and I get my body rotating more, well, that's just gonna open up the face, and that's what happened here. I got my path to be in the slot, but my face was really, really open. So I have to learn these proper wrist angles as I'm coming down to be able to get that face squared up when I'm coming into contact, and now I'm gonna be in business. I'm gonna have that club shallowing out. I'm gonna have that nice compressed shot because now I'm squaring up the face. And this is what we refer to as the anti-roll method. So if you'd like to learn those proper wrist angles and like to learn the anti-roll method, Clay Ballard, the founder of Tospi Golf, is gonna go over that in a preview here in just a second. But if you'd like to get that whole video, all you have to do is click the link below the video in the description, or you can click the i-card that's gonna appear on your screen. Play well, and I'll talk to you soon. Here's the bottom line. If you've been taught to roll the club in the early downswing, that causes the shaft to get steep, and that steep club causes all your problems. It causes you to hit it way behind the big hitters and way inconsistent with your quality of strikes. So you're in the tall grass and the trees and the hazards all day long. Now the great news is this. There's really only two pieces that you need to know to fix all these problems. The first one is we need to learn the proper way to square up the club face. Instead of rolling the forearms and getting steep, there's another way that the pros do this. Once you learn this right way to square up the club face, then you can shallow out from the inside and everything starts to fit together. Now I'm gonna teach you this right now in what I call the anti-roll method. You may also hear this called the motorcycle move or the tour twist, but let's walk through exactly how to do that. Now what I want you to do is go ahead and go kind of in the last parallel in the downswing. So here, I want my hips to go ahead and be opening up. I want my club to be parallel with the ground and I want my hands to be in front of my right thigh. Now, when I take my grip, you're gonna notice that when I do this, the club face is basically straight up and down. So if I'm looking at it from this angle, you'll see the face is straight up and down and my logo of my glove is pointed out in front of me. Now from there,